So let's do another pass through Marmoset, only this time we're gonna use Marmoset Texturing uh, to go ahead and do a little bit of look dev. So instead of adding the wood texture in and poly painting it, we can do a much more flexible, non-destructive pass in Marmoset. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it up just like we did previously. And for the albedo, it doesn't really matter. We can just send over RGB. We're not gonna use it anyway, so no big deal. We'll go ahead and switch this over to Metal Roughness, and then we'll say Create Tool Bag Composite. Now, just like we did before, you can always, you know, let's go back to Classic here temporarily, uh, this Classic tab in Marmoset 4. So in Main Camera, you can switch this to Front, uh, and then you can use the Front Camera. Like I said before, I think there are some effects that you're only gonna get out of a perspective camera. So I'm gonna go back to my camera's Main Camera, switch to Main Camera, change Mode to Orthographic, and then go up here to Transform and just zero out these rotations, effectively turning this into a regular camera view. Now you may not have the, uh, the library window down here, so we'll just go ahead and close that. And now let's use Marmoset to texture this thing with uh, materials just like we did in Substance Painter in a previous video. So to set this up, let's go into the Texture tab. And this is going to break it down into the Texture Workflow setup, essentially. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can start this. You can go up here to Scene, Add Object, texture project, you can go up here to texture, new texture project, or just right over here in the layers, say add a texture project. That's going to put a texture project in your Marmoset scene. And with that selected, just like when you select render or main camera, you get camera settings and your render settings. When you go to the texture project, these are gonna be your texture project settings. Now, the first thing we need to do is drag and drop uh, a material here. Now, in this case, you know, you can go back to your materials, you can drag and drop this one on here, but you don't need to. You can actually add a brand new material if you want. You can double click this call it like Scarab Texture Set or whatever, drag this material right on top of here, and that is going to link that material to these input maps, and we wanna go ahead and apply this Scarab uh, to our plane. However, if we drag it on there, it's gonna not do anything because it's locked. Another thing to keep in mind is if we go up here to Render and turn on Use Ray Tracing, you're gonna get a little bit of, let's go back to Classic here, a little bit of artifacting along the edges. That's because we're getting poor resolution on our displacement map. So how to fix that is go into plane. So you're gonna need to unlock the plane to go in here to turn on subdivide, crank the subdivision level up to, you know, three or four. And we'll go back into our texture view here. Uh, with the main camera selected, we'll go in here to transform, zero out our rotations again. So we're into more of an orthographic view. And then now we can drag this Scarab TS new texture onto our plane. Now it's gonna wipe out everything, but that's okay because we can reset this up. So what we're gonna do is gonna go back into our texture project and we have a bunch of input maps. And these are essentially what's going to drive how you texture this. So when you do like a dirt map, it's gonna use the curvature or you do a dirt generator, you do it is gonna use the curvature and the AO to kind of find the crevices and know how to apply materials and textures and generators and masks to your object. However, we don't have any input maps. So we're gonna to need to go find those. Now, if you go over here to where your, plug is in, where your plugin is installed, so C, Program Files, Pixelogic, ZBrush 2021, or whatever version you're using, Z Startup, Z Plug 64, uh, ZBrush Compositor data, this is where it has a bunch of the Z materials, and under files it has some like basic uh, files that it needs. However, where your baked files from ZBrush are that we're gonna need to use are gonna be under your ZBrush data folder. So that's gonna be under your C Drive, Users, Public, Public Documents, ZBrush Data 2021. And in here, there's a Z plugin data, ZBrush compositor data, and here's all of your maps that need to be plugged in. So previously, that's actually what's plugged in here is all of these maps. So what I'm gonna be doing is dragging from this Windows Explorer folder into these input maps. So first we'll start with our curvature map. So I'm just gonna drag my curvature PSD right in there. Then our normal map, then our world space normal map into our normal object, our ID map into our material ID, and our ambient occlusion map into our AO. Now you can also add more maps. So for example, we need um, transparency on here. So let's go ahead and add new, add a transparency. And we can just navigate to that folder here. It's gonna automatically go there. So you can just go ahead and drop in your opacity in there. And then we'll also add a thickness mask. Or in this case, we can also add a transmission mask if you wanted to do like subsurface scattering. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say transmission mask. And then here we're gonna plug in our thickness. Now, as we're texturing this, it's actually gonna be texturing at 4096. I don't think we need that much detail, but feel free to keep this here if you want to. I'm gonna turn this down to 2048 or just click this little down arrow. And our main camera is set to full quality. So again, back on our renderer, if we had ray tracing turned on, you need to have it at full quality in order to get it to show up. And if we double click our scarab material, 
we're gonna need to actually plug in our transparency. Let's go here over to transparency, choose cutout, and then I'm just gonna drag my opacity right in there. And it's not gonna do anything. You need to go over here to your channel and then just choose R, G, or B. So now we're pretty much set up. There's only just one more thing we need to do, and that's under displacement. Go ahead and choose height, and then drop in your displacement map. If I turn to the side here, that's gonna be driving the height so we can get some nice shadows going. So that's where you just go in here to your scale and just crank that scale up until it looks about right. And then go back here to your main camera, zero these out. And now as we move this, this light around, we'll get some nice shadows cast. So now you've manually set up your material and your texture project. So now we can start texturing this thing.